Hello everyone, good day. I am Jomarik Elma Pindan, your teacher presenter for today's episode of Deaf and Teletroan. Today, we will determine the distinguishing characteristics of the two different classifications of animals, the vertebrates and invertebrates. Animals obtain their food and energy by consuming other organisms. Though animals differ in any characteristics, each of them plays an important role in the ecosystem. They are able to grow, move, reproduce, metabolize, respond to stimuli, and adapt to their environment. On this lesson, you will be able to determine the distinguishing characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates. The difference between these two groups is the presence of backbone. Vertebrates have backbones while invertebrates do not. Organisms under these two groups can be further categorized based on their anatomy, feeding habits, movement, reproductions, components of the organ systems, adaptations, and more. Now let's start with vertebrates. The presence of the backbone is the common characteristic among vertebrates. The backbone provides actual support and houses the spinal cord. At the end of the spinal cord is the enlarged brain. Most animals you see around you are vertebrates. Birds, cats, dogs, cows, lizards, frogs, and many more. Even humans are vertebrates. Since the vertebrate group is large and diverse, it can be subdivided into five groups. Fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. First, we have fishes. Fishes are vertebrates that live in water. They are cold-blooded animals, which means their temperature changes depending on the temperature of their surroundings. They have a body shape adapted for living and moving in aquatic habitats. Their body are protected with scales. The tail is used for locomotion, while fins are used for steering and maintaining balance. They breathe through gills. They mostly undergo external fertilization. Fishes have many smaller groups. There are jawless fishes, which includes lampreys and hagfishes. Their mouths are equipped with sharp teeth, which enables them to cling and attach to other fish. They feed in other fish, sucking out their fluids and drawing out their internal organs. Shark, rays, and skates are cartilaginous fishes. Their skeleton is made up of cartilage instead of bones. They are mostly found in warm, tropical seas. Sharks live in the open part of the sea and are considered the ultimate hunters. While rays and skates live at the bottom of the sea and are not as aggressive as sharks. The largest group of fishes are the bony fishes. They are the most diverse of the fish groups. Most of the fishes you know belong to this group such as milkfish, tilapia, and salmon. Bony fish live in almost every aquatic environment, salt water, and fresh water. They have a gas-filled sac known as swim bladder, which helps them maintain balance. Their gills are covered and protected with a flap called an operculum. Next are the amphibians. The word amphibia means double lives, which refers to the ability of the animal to live in both land and water. Frogs, toads, and salamanders are amphibians. They are also cold-blooded animals, which means their temperature depends on the temperature of their surroundings. They feed on insects, worms, and other animals. In order to live in both land and water, amphibians have legs instead of fins as well as lungs for breathing air. Most amphibians also have thin, soft, and slimy skin, which is also used for breathing. The moist surface of their skin enables them to absorb oxygen from the air. Because of the need to keep their skin moist, amphibians are usually found in wet environments, such as ponds or swamps. In hot and dry days, they may bury themselves in mud to prevent skin from drying up. Next are reptiles. Reptiles are cold-blooded animals. They can also live both water and land, although they are more adapted and can live on land for a long period of time. 
This is because they have developed lungs as well as body structure that enables them to fully live on land. A reptile's body is covered with dry skin and hard scales. These prevent the loss of water from the body through evaporation. Their eggs have leathery shells which make them adapted for developing on land. Snakes are reptiles without legs. Their long body is covered with scales. They do not have ears or only hear sensing vibrations on the surface. They can swallow prey that are larger than their mouth because their jaws can stretch. Contrary to the common belief, only a few snakes are poisonous. However, they can still cause injuries with their fangs and flexible bodies. Lizards have scales like snakes, but they have legs. They can climb trees and hold onto objects with their toes. The microscopic hair on their feet enables some of them to climb walls and walk on ceilings without falling. Turtles and tortoises are special reptiles because of their soft body is covered with shell made of bones. Their backbone and ribs are attached to the shell. Some turtles have long beaks that they use to capture food. They can also live to more than a hundred years. Birds are warm-blooded animals. They are able to regulate their body's temperature. They remain active in cold and warm climates. They have a respiratory system that includes air sacs which give them a unique mechanism for breathing. Most birds can fly, with a few exceptions such as emu, penguins, and kiwi. Even chickens can fly short distances. This is because birds have very light bodies which consist of a hollow bones. They also possess flight feathers found in wings and tails which are arranged in a way that help carry and lift the bird up in the air. Different birds have different body structures that help them adapt to their environment. Perching birds have feet that are formed in such a way that they easily blast a tree branch. Their beaks are long, thin, and strong enough to crack nuts or open tree barks. Woodpecker, sparrow, larks, and crows are perching birds. Water birds have long and flat beak and webbed feet. They stay in water most of the time to get their food. Examples are ducks, geese, and swans. Flightless birds have small wings and a big body so they cannot fly. Many flightless birds live in large open spaces in deserts and plains. An example is the ostrich that makes use of its long legs for running and kicking its enemies. Eagles and hawks are birds of prey. They have strong and curved beaks to tear their prey into pieces. They have talons or sharp claws to grab and hold their prey. Lastly, we have mammals. The term mammals came from the Greek word mama which means breast. They are the only group of animals with mammary glands, which produce milk to nourish their young. All mammals are warm-blooded. They are able to self-regulate their internal temperature. Their bodies are covered in fur or hair to serve as protection. They have more developed organ systems too. Their heart has four chambers to efficiently circulate blood and a strong diaphragm as its breathing. Most mammals have two sets of limbs used extensively for movement and obtaining food. They also grow two sets of teeth, the first set being milk teeth, which are eventually replaced by a second set called permanent teeth. For most mammals, the young develops inside the female's body. They are born in a form that resembles the parents such as marsupials and placental mammals. Placental mammals are the common type of mammals. Their young develops inside their uterus with the placenta that gives them nourishment. After a certain time, they are born alive. On the other hand, marsupials or pouch mammals keep their young in their pouches as they continue to develop and grow. 
While in the pouch, the young suck their mother's milk for nourishment. Kangaroos and koalas are marsupials. Some mammals give birth to their offspring by other means such as monotremes. Monotremes such as spiny anteater and duck-billed platypus are egg-laying mammals. They share more characteristics with reptiles than mammals. Their mammary glands are also not as developed. Mammals come in different forms and sizes, from small rodents to large whales and elephants. The primates, such as monkeys, apes, and humans, are the most advanced of mammals. Their higher level of intelligence comes primarily from their larger brains. Remember that the presence of the backbone is the common characteristics among vertebrates. We can subdivide vertebrates into five groups. The fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. At this point, let's see if you learned something by answering these questions. These are cold-blooded animals that can live in both land and water like frogs, toads, and salamanders. Is that letter A, amphibians? Letter B, fishes? Letter C, mammals? Letter D, reptiles? The answer is letter A, amphibians. Mammals are developed their young inside their mother's body and are fully formed when they born. Which of the following vertebrates is a mammal? Is it letter A, carabao? Letter B, eagle? Letter C, lizard? Or letter D, snake? The answer is letter A, carabao. These vertebrates has a very light bodies which consists of hollow bones. They also possess flight feathers found in wings and tails, which are arranged in a way that help carry and lift the body up in the air. Is it letter A, birds? Letter B, fishes? Letter C, mammals? Or letter D, reptiles? The answer is letter A, birds. Reptiles are cold-blooded vertebrates and their body is covered with dry skin and the hard scales. These prevent the loss of water from the body through evaporation. The following are reptiles except letter A, alligator, letter B, crocodile, letter C, mouse, or letter D, turtle. The answer is letter C. Mouse. These vertebrates breathe with their gills and move into the water with their paired fins. Letter A, birds. Letter B, fishes. Letter C, mammals. Or letter D, reptiles. The answer is letter B, fishes. There you have it. Please stay tuned for our next lesson about invertebrates. We'll be right back after a few reminders.